welcome back to the channel. Today's recap is about a 2017 American sci-fi horror film named Life. The movie follows the journey of a six-person International Space Station crew discovers the first evidence of alien life on Mars. When the team conducts their investigation, the quickly developing life form reveals itself to be significantly more clever and frightening. Spoiler ahead, watch out and have fun! The movie opens in outer space. A team of astronauts aboard the ISS prepares to intercept the Pilgrim, which is a satellite capsule returning from Mars. The Pilgrim is on its way to make history as it carries soil samples from Mars. It also contains proof of living forms which the astronauts think will give the inhabitants of Earth hope for a future relocation to Mars. The team's primary goal is to intercept the Pilgrim and determine whether or not life is conceivable on Mars. Unfortunately, the Pilgrim is damaged and veers off the course. Turns out, when returning from Mars to the International Space Station or ISS, the unmanned Pilgrim 7 space probe encounters an asteroid field and sustains significant damage. It is carrying a soil sample that might hold proof of alien life, which motivates ISS to think of another way to obtain the lost treasure. Rory Adams, an engineer, suits up and prepares for a spacewalk. He'd be outside the space station, ordering and operating a mechanical arm to capture the Pilgrim. His co-workers are assisting him in preparing for his mission. The ISS is tense as the astronauts race into their positions as they maneuver the station. Their commander, Ekaterina Golovkina, and another astronaut, Shomuro Kami, are in charge of the operation from the station's command center. The other astronauts keep a close eye on the station as it maneuvers into position to intercept the Pilgrim. The station doctor, David Jordan, keeps an eye on Rory's vital signs. From the window, he and the chief scientist, Hugh Derry, keep an eye on Rory. Anxiety permeates the station as the Pilgrim capsule approaches the station. Rory maneuvers the arm into place and the entire station is pushed back as the Pilgrim barrels in and makes contact. The astronauts inside are pushed back as well, but they soon reassemble at their stations. As they peer through the glass, they find Rory has already apprehended the Pilgrim. As Ekaterina informs NASA that the Pilgrim spacecraft has successfully landed on the station, cheers and smiles are shared. At the laboratory, Hugh, who's an exobiologist, carefully takes one of the vials contained in the soil and places them under a microscope. In the sample, he discovers an organism that's almost fossilized. According to his interpretation, it is something similar to a single-celled organism. Next, he tries to reanimate the organism, but strangely, it doesn't react to it. He then tries to bring the atmosphere closer to Proterozoic Earth, which is similar to the old Mars environment, and adds in a growth hormone. As everyone cheers, Hugh knows he has awakened a dormant cell from the sample. They have finally confirmed the existence of life from outside Earth as well as in Mars, a planet close to Earth. The team later calls Earth. Meanwhile in Earth, news outlets and large crowds are all celebrating the discovery of alien life. Kids can be seen in TV shows asking questions to the team on ISS and the astronauts chat with students announcing that their school has been given the extraordinary chance to name the alien life form as it regenerates to its full form. One of the kids declare that they have decided to name the organism Calvin. After the call, the astronauts resume their mission of resurrecting the life form. Hugh and Rory talk while trained to fix plumbing. Meanwhile, another doctor, Miranda North, checks on David's health. Miranda is concerned about David as he has been on the station for a significant amount of time, more than pretty much all of them. He's almost breaking the world record for the longest time in space. David is pretty much chilled as he doesn't mind staying on the space station. He feels as if he's meant to be there forever. For the next few days, they continue testing the organism to various stimuli. Hugh notices that Calvin has grown rapidly in a very short time, almost defying science as they know it. Now it consists of hundreds of cells and is developing a neural network. Hugh notes that each of these cells can perform every somatic function independently, meaning each of the cells are living individuals on its own. Simultaneously, a muscle cell, a nerve cell, and a photoreceptor cell. Hugh deduces that Calvin is a creature which has little to no weak points as it's all brain, all muscle, and all eyes. Killing such a creature will be close to impossible. Hugh plays around with Calvin, who now has taken a shape along with some appendages. Several weeks later, the station was shaken by an alarm. There has been a malfunction in the lab, which the team quickly tries to fix. Hugh has grown attached to Calvin and his teammates remind him to keep Calvin contained as they're still not aware of the full extent of the alien life form. Calvin goes dormant in the lab after several weeks of sustained growth. The astronauts think of it as a defense mechanism. 
Hugh revives Calvin with gentle electric shocks, but Calvin turns aggressive and attacks stomping on Hugh's hand. Hugh is knocked out by Calvin's attack, but Calvin breaks Hugh's hand into mangled shape. Calvin uses the electric shock weapon Hugh used to get out of his immediate confinement. Now free in the lab, Calvin increases in bulk while consuming a lab rat by absorbing it. Rory Adams, an engineer, takes advantage of the opening to enter the space and save Hugh. But when Calvin grabs hold of Rory's leg, Dr. David Jordan looks Rory in the room to subdue Calvin. Calvin enters Rory's mouth and kills him by consuming his internal organs after Rory attempts to fight him with a flamethrower but fails. Calvin escapes via fire control vent after becoming even larger and emerging from Rory's mouth. Hugh postulates that the creature was kept dormant by the planet Mars' absence of breathing air. Mission Commander Ekaterina Golovkina undertakes a spacewalk to address the overheating after discovering that their contact with Earth has been cut off owing to the overheating of the communication devices. After breaching the cooling system, Calvin tackles her outside the ISS, rupturing the coolant system of her spacesuit in the process, resulting in hazardous liquid filling her helmet. She struggles to re-enter the International Space Station but soon discovers that Calvin will also be able to do so. She forbids David from opening the airlock to call for assistance, and she prevents Calvin from entering the station. As a result, she drowns in her spacesuit and her body floats out into space. Calvin tries to use the station's thrusters to board. Calvin enters these holes despite the crew's best efforts to stop him using the thrusters, and the station loses too much fuel as a result. The ISS moves into an orbit that will eventually lead it to burn up in the atmosphere of Earth. The team is informed by pilot Sho Motokami that they must burn the remaining fuel to return to a safe orbit, but that the effort would let Calvin to the station again. The crew then intends to isolate itself in one module and exhaust the atmosphere from the rest of the station in order to put Calvin into a dormant state. The team discovers Calvin was feeding from Hugh's lug after Hugh has cardiac arrest. Calvin assaults the rest of the team after developing into a bigger tentacled beast. Sho locks himself inside a sleeping pod as Calvin tries to eat him by breaking the glass. Calvin is trapped in a module to be denied air by David and the quarantine officer Miranda North using Hugh's corpse as bait to entice Calvin away from Sho. Earth dispatches a Soyuz capsule as a backup plan to launch the station into deep space after receiving a distress call prior to the ISS communication system being damaged. As it pushes the station into outer space, the capsule docks with the station. Sho rushes to board the approaching ship by breaking open the door since he thinks it's a rescue mission, but Calvin assaults him and the Soyuz crew as soon as he does so. Sho and the Soyuz pilots are killed when the collision leads to a docking breach, which forces the capsule to detach and smash into the ISS. The only survivors, David and Miranda, are now aware that the catastrophe has sent them back into a declining orbit. David remembers building two escape pods with the intention of luring Calvin into one taking him into deep space and taking Miranda to Earth in the other. David was aware that Calvin may survive her entry. Calvin is escorted inside a spacecraft by David while Miranda launches her own. One of the pods runs into some debris and veers off track. David is attacked by Calvin as he tries to launch his spacecraft. The Earth-bound pod makes a controlled re-entry and settles in the water close to a boat carrying two Vietnamese fishermen after the pod split. It becomes apparent when they go closer and take a look inside the pod that it's David who's covered in a web-like material. Miranda's navigation system fails owing to damage it incurred from colliding with the debris and she's left with no choice but to cry helplessly as her pod is launched hurtly into deep space where she will die alone and in silence. David, who's still alive, tries to caution the unaware fisherman against trying to save him. Two further fishing boats come into view as the fishermen unlock the pod entrance. The movie ends indicating Martian life getting released on Earth. And that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to many such videos. Thanks for watching and take care.